Well, then have you ever heard of chicken being too sexy? Um, chickens aren't sexy. Well, we know that. But then again, we have, like, enough brain cells to not join PETA. But anyway. <laughs> Is this chicken too sexy? PETA thinks so. The pinup style photo of a raw chicken lounging seductively ran in Wednesday's food section of the New York Times, along with a story on the repeal of crispy, savory chicken skin. Now the Animal Cruelty Prevention Organization is aiming their laser beam target at the old gray lady. I have no idea what any of that meant. Mm. Mm. So... You're just as confused as I am. That's great. Okay. When I saw it, I just couldn't believe that an editor of the New York Times would find it acceptable. PETA's founder and president, Ingrid Newkirk, Mm -hmm. told the Atlantic Wire, It's downright offensive, and not just to people who care about animals, but almost to everyone. It's a plucked, beheaded young chicken in a young pose. Young pose? Okay. That's what it says. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. I think that was a typo, but all right. Tina Lloyd, the Times photo editor who commissioned the shoot, didn't see it that way. That chicken had attitude, she said, of the model. (laughs) She said of the model who was propped into a come-hither position with the help of weights and wires. The image was intended as humorous, eye-catching approach to your standard food fetish art. Food fetish? (laughs) But but Peter's new Kirk is calling it necrophilia. Maybe he's mad that the Times stole a signature PETA move. For years, their print and commercial campaigns have relied on sex, particularly naked women, to attract media attention. Sex has become so synonymous with PETA, they're launching a pornogra- por- excuse me, pornography site linked inexplicably to their animal rights message. So what's so bad about a lounging chicken? If anything... Peter should be think- thanking the Times after staring long enough at the photo of this goose pimpled, cross legged, headless harlot. I may never eat chicken again. <laughs> um. Um. Okay. Where to start? Um. A young pose. I mean. I don't know. Was it someone's pet chicken, and it was named Lolita? <laughs> I don't know. What is so sexy about a plucked dead chicken um, put in a come hither position with the help of weights and wires? Um, did they use butter to make sure it sparkled in that special way? Or did they use baby oil? <laughs> I don't know, man, because when I look at that chicken, all I think is, mmm. Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I mean, for goodness sakes, Peter shows more raw meat on their website than that. Obviously, they're making a pornography site, or a pornography, as I was trying to say earlier. Yeah. So, I don't know what the hell they're on about. It's chicken. And the funny thing is, I mean, there are... Okay, if you really want to throw a fit, how come they're not taking down these billboards of half-naked women or taking down these other, you know, I mean, there are some really raunchy things. Why aren't they saying anything about the, um, all the music videos now where women are, like, (laughs) barely dressed? Or, you know, take it to an even deeper level. Who the hell cares about one lousy chicken when there is a sex trade going around the world that is so bad that people are dying from it? Yeah. And some of those kids really are young. You know, that... I mean, and it's kind of common knowledge now. I mean, they they pick up little 14-year-old, not just Asians. It used to be just Asians, but now it's it's whites, blacks, Mexicans, all these they kidnap little girls, and I think now little boys, and sell them. Exactly. And, you know, that to me is just a little bit more important than a chicken. Yeah. Not and, saying you know, that the chicken's are... pain isn't valid. The, you know, the chicken's pain is valid. 
But let me tell you, I will I will think of this when I'm munching down on the chicken leg after I've cooked it in a nice lemon sauce. And you know what's funny is, and I think everyone has done this at least once, everyone has looked at a plate of food and thought, man, that's sexy. Well, the, you know, Jamie Oliver, he puts out sexy food every single day. <clears throat> he does. Haven't you seen Jamie but... Oliver? He, oh. That man is a genius. Like, do it from a height, and then it will fall perfectly on the plate. And I try that, and I just make a damn mess. So I don't know how the hell he does it. It's because he's British, isn't he? Maybe he has the help of the doctor. Exactly. See? The doctor traveled forward in time, and, and he sat there and did this over and over again, told him exactly which height it needed to be, then they cut and edited it all together, and bam, perfect. Exactly. That's how it went. <laughs> Precisely. But then hang on, let me let me post this link into the chat room, which will be now, but for you guys it'll be like relevant in about two seconds more. Okay. So you see that picture there on the top of the article? Yes. This is where you will need to click the link, by the way. Um yes. So the reading of this one says, um, Recreate yourself hair and beauty salon in Burley Head sent out 30,000 posters featuring a model in seductive lingerie sitting in a chair with a cat between her legs as part of a promotion to support the Animal Welfare League. The salon will donate $1 Australian to the league for each waxing service booked. Okay, so picture this. The woman is in, like, full stockings. It's not even thigh highs. Okay, she's wearing a leatherish corset. There is a grey cat between her legs who is wearing a tie, and she's patting the cat. Now, I will say cat... Bow ties are cool. Bow ties are cool. Yes, that is that is official. Um, she's wearing more clothes than probably about 80% of the billboards that get put up with a woman on it. she's, she's not... definitely wearing more clothes than the cat is. Exactly. <laughs> Um, you know, what's their problem? There is nothing showing, you know, and unless you are thinking with a dirty mind, you know, it's a cat on a chair with a woman. whoop de do. I mean, you know, anyone that owns a pet knows that that's exactly where the pet's going to go anyway, so what's the problem? Exactly. You know, get your sick minds out of the bloomin' gutter and just enjoy the picture. It's a very tasteful, and it's very, oh, I lost the word. It's a new look at things. I mean, that's genius to me. Exactly. You know? Yeah. And then there's another one, which is also up there, and I guess one of us will be posting it now. Mm -hmm. And it's something, it's, a, it's one talking about cancer, and it's a woman who is, you know, she is in a, a uh, lingerie bra. top and bottom. Bra and panties. Um, yeah, bra and panties. Whatever. I was trying to be tasteful. <laughs> anyway, and she is a gorgeous woman. I mean, absolutely gorgeous. The problem is that she's obviously had a mastectomy done. A mastectomy. She's had her boob cut off, okay? Yeah. And she has the non-existent boob showing. Her her actual boob is covered. Mm. And this is a controversial picture. And there's no nipple. There's just a big scar. Literally. Yeah, there's just a big scar there. And that really hits home to people who have had, you know, this type of procedure done, who have breast cancer or whatever. You know, it's not just old people. It's not just, you know, things like this. Yep. Everyone, you know, is, has this fear. And I think that's part of what makes it hit home. But it's also the fact that, you know, you don't have to stop living just because you're not perfect. But that's the problem, is the fact that she's not perfect, that she is that gorgeous, but she has a flaw and no one wants to see it. But, you know, it, it's things like the, the next thing that I'm going to talk about that sort of hit home to me. Because, you know, we've got this beautiful picture of a beautiful woman who happens to have a scar. You know, and, and no nipple. But then you've got all these losers on the net 
there is actually a website that they talked about on my morning news program this morning where complete strangers can pair themselves up with a woman who has small breasts and they can offer to pay for her breast enlargement. Wow. Okay. Um, this is kind of wrong on quite a few levels for me, but the only thing that would make it okay with me would be is if automatically every woman that had breast cancer had had a mastectomy and wants to have a breast reconstruction, they go to the top of the list. Wow. So these strangers are paying for someone else that they've never met to have a boob job. You know, wow. So if they could turn around and perhaps put money towards breast cancer research, put money towards forcing the governments to actually see breast reconstruction after mastectomies as, you know, as a... Um, a non non elective surgery. You know, because probably the the loss of a breast would probably be almost as hard for women as losing their hair. Mm-hmm. And since October is breast cancer awareness month, I thought, you know Yeah. I mean, you know, 